Okay, my friends, we're back. And I want to talk to you about the first segment of the seven C's. Um, as I think I indicated, I've broken the seven C's down into um, three main categories. We're going to talk about the first group of C's uh, right now. Okay, we start in the middle, we're going to work our way out. So client centered, client driven. That is the approach that we all have to take when we're dealing with the service system that is, is, that is working with folks with mental illness, that when we're dealing with um, individuals within that service system, when we're dealing with um, our loved ones and our families, working with, with someone with mental illness, and frankly, for ourselves, when we are thinking about our own needs and our own self-care, uh, it's very important that we start with client center. And I know this sounds ridiculous. It sounds so silly that I should even have to say this, that, well, of course we have to start with the person. We have to start with the client, the patient, the person with the mental illness. Um, but trust me, uh, you know, Brenda Bouchard likes to say common sense is not common practice. You would be amazed at how many times people who are in the middle of it, people who are living the mental illness, the, 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 the clients or the patients are not being asked what their thoughts are, what their, what their needs are, what their goals are. I've been in meetings and rooms with dozens and dozens of people, all for the benefit of one person. And we're talking about all these great ideas, these pie in the sky dreams that we have for the person, these goals that we're setting for that individual, and guess what? The person that we're talking about is not in the room. It's completely, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's unacceptable. It's counterintuitive. We all know that in order for us to get anywhere, in order for us as human beings to make progress, we have to feel that we have a vested interest in it, right? We have to feel like hey, this was part of our idea. This is something I want, so I'm going to really go for it. We cannot impose our views of what somebody else should want and then expect that to come to fruition. I use the example all the time. I uh, use it right now. And this is, from, this is a true story. Um, you know, you're in a meeting and you're setting goals and you're talking about the care of an individual. And we say, well, we would really like Mark to stop smoking. Okay, great. That's a great goal, right? We all should stop smoking. We really want Mark to stop smoking. Okay, let's put that down as a goal that hopefully he'll achieve in six months. Well, guess what? When the treatment plan was then brought over to Mark, Mark said, I don't want to quit smoking. I have no desire to quit smoking. I like smoking. There's the problem, right? There's the fundamental lapse uh, in, this whole, in this whole beginning. We cannot begin if Mark doesn't want to quit smoking. He's not going to attain that goal. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. So let's think about that from your perspective as well. And you as a care provider, you as a family member, you as a loved one, we have to make sure that you are making sure that you are client-centered, that you are client-driven for yourself and that you are making sure you're taking care of yourself. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not gonna be able to take care of your loved one, okay? So let's just leave it at that. I'm not gonna belabor that point. You all know it. It's, 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 it's a horse that's been beaten to death several times over. All right, the second concept in this first quadrant, if you want to call it module, I guess, is the idea of communication. We have to be willing to communicate with each other on a macro level. You hear all the time about HIPAA this, HIPAA that, privacy this, privacy that. And I, and I, I can't emphasize this enough. Number one, in most circumstances, HIPAA does not apply. And you could check me on that and go do some research if you don't believe it. Uh, but also, folks, there's nothing in the law that says that people cannot listen to each other. There's no privacy act, there's no confidentiality act that says that I can't listen to what you have to say or get information from you about an individual or about a circumstance. I may not be able to give you information, I may not be able to share stuff with you, but I can certainly listen. And as family members, one of the things that we want the most is just to have somebody listen to us. I've heard it time and time again. So communication in that regard is one thing, okay? But imagine if we can get and we can ensure that communication is going on in the entire network of individuals and providers 
who are, who are giving services to that at need population. That is the folks with mental illness. If they are talking amongst each other and opening up lines of communication that may never have been opened up before, well, you know, that's the beginning to allow things to change, things to get implemented, new strategies, to, easy for me to say, new strategies to be tried out. Um, it's the lack of communication among the service system, I think, that is potentially one of the biggest culprits in the failure of the service system. All right, now let's, as I like to do, let's bring it home and let's talk about you individually. You as a care provider, you as a loved one, as a guardian, as a fiduciary, uh, you have to communicate the needs that we talked about with regard to client care, self-care. You have to communicate your position, your very specialized needs to other people as well. Um, I say you have to let other people know what your boundaries are, know what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, knowing what you will accept, what you won't accept. And you have to be um, very, uh, well, loud and proud about it, right? You, you have the right to have your own desires. You have the right to have your own needs. And you have the right to say no sometimes. So be sure to communicate what those are to everyone around you, whether you are a person with mental illness, whether you are the, the, the care provider, the main care provider, or an extended family member, or the sister or brother in the home with somebody who has mental illness. You have the right to, to um, be aware, be, um, you have the right to your own uh, dignity and your own needs and your own expectations. Give yourself that permission. Okay, and the, and the final thing in this one module I wanna to get to is the idea of collaboration. It is exceedingly important that in, in, once we get people communicating, we get them to talk about how they can work together, okay? Um, what kind of resources does one service system or one um, entity offer that another entity may not offer? It's not a matter of saying, you know, I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna let them do all the work. No, if, if in order for anything to succeed, we have to work together. Um, and we have to be willing to work together and we have to be willing to say, you know, I don't have all the answers. I'm not really good in this one area, right? I'm really good in that area. So I'll take care of area B, you take care of area A and let's really put our, our, our real strengths uh, together. And how does that work with you individually, right? You individually, as a person with mental illness, you as a person who's a caregiver, fiduciary, you have to be willing to collaborate as well. You have to be willing to say, there are times that I'm going to need other people. And this goes back to a little bit of communication and expressing those needs. You have to be willing to say, I need other people. And you have to understand that there are people out there who are willing to work and help you. They are willing to help you. They will learn from you. You will learn from them. You will give to each other. And, and as you collaborate and you work together to move through the system and to move through everyday life, things just become easier. It's, it's one of those concepts, you know, and I talk about this in one of my webinars where we, we, hear, we hear this um, where um, African proverb, it says, if you want to go somewhere far, go, uh, no, if you want to go somewhere fast, go alone. If you want to go somewhere far, go as a team. And that's what I'm talking about here. You have people all around you who care, who are able, who, who are willing to help you with whatever it may, need, it may be that you need. You got to ask them. You got to pull together that team. And you've got to be a fearless leader of that team. And, and, you know, when you have that team around you and they understand your needs and you understand their needs, the sky's the limit. You can go anywhere. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my uh, lesson for today, the module today that we broke down the first three of the seven C's, that being uh, coordination, and I'm sorry, <laughs> client-driven, communicative, and collaborative. So we will talk about the next uh, module uh, in the next video. I will see you there.